Welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this simple, customizable wine rack out of about $40 worth of wood you can find at your big box store. Don't worry, I'm not going to bore you with a long introduction or history on wood, so let's just get right into it. Once you've got your wood sourced and ready to go, let's start by cutting the slats. The slats, as I call them, are the little rails that the wine bottles actually touch when they're resting in the wine rack. Let's begin by setting our fence to 10 inches. This is going to be the total length of each slat. Next, I'll cut them to the final width, or about 3 quarters of an inch. So in the end, I'll have 36 total. 3 quarter by 3 quarter by 10 slats. Sorry for the bad angle here. I realized halfway into the cuts you could only see my back, so move the camera, that way you can get a better view. So there you go, 36 slats. Next, I ended up cutting the top. This is about 16 and 1 8 inch long, and it's cut from a 1 by 12. So for those of you who don't know, or are new to woodworking, dimensional lumber is sold in 1 by's, for example. 1 by 12 is actually 3 quarter inch by 11 and 1 quarter inch. These are the legs, cut from 1 by 2's. And the overall length of each one is going to be about 25 inches. When sourcing your lumber, and this goes for all the cuts, you'll want to avoid anything too cupped, bowed, or twisted. It's a major headache when trying to work with it later on. Trust me. So you're going to need 8 of these. Bust out your miter saw or whatever you have at your disposal. And if you're like me, you like to have shortcuts, I clamp them together before I cut them. That way I know I'm getting the exact same consistent cut for all pieces. It saves a lot of time if you're trying to measure and mark each one individually. Lastly, it's time to cut the fronts, or aprons, or trim, or whatever official furniture building terminology you want to use here. I just call them fronts because it's easier to say. These are unlike the one buys from before, they are actually half an inch thick. So you'll need to either buy them that way, plane them down if you have a planer, or rip them on a table saw. I've done all three methods, and I prefer planing and ripping. One by lumber is a lot more affordable than pre-cut half inch. So set your fence to 2 inches and start ripping. So now I'm setting my fence to half an inch and ripping them down to the right thickness. Definitely take your time here and go slow. There's a lot of danger with the blade so far extended. Now, I just bought this feather board to try it out. I needed a dual tall stacking one. And it just doesn't really fit my table. You're going to see in a moment it's sliding as I'm pushing the material through. So I had to fight with it the whole time. Definitely not a safe situation. So just to recap, we got all of our cuts done. 36 slats, 4 fronts, eight legs, one top. So now, it's time for everybody's favorite pastime, sanding. It's not everybody's favorite thing to do, but I find sanding to be therapeutic. Just start with 120 grit and work all the way up to 220 grit. And for anyone that's interested, I do plan to make a video dedicated solely to sanding. Tips, tricks, and techniques I've learned along the ways as well as some recommended equipment and tools that you should probably get if you plan to do this long term.
At this point, everything is sanded and almost ready for stain. Now since this is a soft wood, and very porous, I like to pre-stain first. Otherwise, on woods like pine, Douglas fir, you're going to get lots of splotchiness and unevenness when staining. You don't need a dedicated pre-mix, pre-stain, but I'm lazy and I don't feel like mixing up shellac and mineral spirits. So I just buy it this way. Once the pre-stain is cured, now it's time for stain. So I make these wine racks quite often and therefore have developed a few tricks to try to speed up the process and save me time later on. You definitely don't have to stain now. You can fully assemble the whole thing first and then stain, but I like to do it this way. Here I'm laying out the slats to get them nice and straight and level with each other. And you'll see why in a second, but I'm gonna apply a piece of tape to either end all the way across, which is going to cover about an inch and a half on either end. That way it does not get stained. The purpose for this is so when you go to glue them up and assemble them, the glue can actually penetrate fully into the wood and the stain does not inhibit any of the glue penetration, making a much more solid, strong joint. So here I'm using packing tape, and masking tape works, also painter's tape would work too. Just stick with one of those three if you're going to do this method. Once you're ready, mix up the stain thoroughly and apply it to a rag, and then just wipe it on. Try not to goop it on, be a little consistent with it, and just wipe off any excess as you go. Just try not to make too much of a mess. It's inevitable, but just do the best you can. After you wipe the excess off, just pull the tape up and you can see the ends are bare. There you go. Just rotate the slats and continue the process. Except going forward, now you can just stain the entire side. Just continue on with the other pieces using the same techniques. I didn't show you in the footage, but just leave the back side of the front bare for glue up to the towers later. After the stain, this is where things finally start to come together. We're going to assemble the towers, as I call them, attaching slats to legs. I made this handy jig up to help expedite the process and get consistent, repeatable results. So obviously you're not going to have this jig unless you make it, but it's really simple. There's a 2 inch gap from one end of the leg to the first slat, then a 3 quarter inch gap between all the remaining slats all the way to the very end. If you did it right, you'll have another 2 inch gap on the other end of the leg. So flip it around after you get the one side squared up, and then just do the same thing. Put the glue down first, get a nice firm contact, and I like to drive in finish nails, 16 gauge, about an inch, inch and a quarter in length. That way I get a nice solid contact. As you can see, sometimes slats don't fit into my jig, so I have to do it by hand. No big deal, just grab a ruler, measure them out. 
Going back during editing, I realized I kept putting the nail gun right in front of the camera. Sorry about that. Here, I'm assembling one of the middle towers, and they have slats on both sides of the legs. So all I do is flip it over and flip my jig over, and then just continue on. After the glue has fully cured and set, you're going to want to go back and touch up stain all the bare sections of the towers we left. Make sure to get in all the nooks and crannies and corners since the pine is a yellowish color and it's really going to stand out if you miss any spots. I'd also like to remind you, you're going to want to leave the front side of the legs and the back side of the legs, where the two inch sections are, bare. That way glue can penetrate when you go to glue up the fronts. At this point, you can see I got some sandpaper and I'm trying to fix some glue that seeped out from under one of the slats. It does happen from time to time, no big deal, just sand it down and reapply the stain. Good to go. Next, it's time to get this mostly assembled. We're going to install the fronts and get all the towers positioned and installed. You're going to need a nice clean level surface. Unlike my very used and stained work table that I need to eventually resurface. But I'll save that for another video. Start by laying out the better front pieces and deciding which part of the towers will act as the front of the wine rack, visible to the world. Now grab some glue and start applying it modestly to the bare sections of the towers in the fronts. Try to give both pieces glue so that way you're not starving one as it goes to cure. Now put a clamp on the first joint and get the tower perfectly vertical and the front perfectly horizontal. You want a nice square edge here. Do the same thing with the other single slat tower on the far side. Again, make sure it's perfectly vertical before you continue on. Now let's do the middle towers. Line them up, and center to center of tower to tower here is 4 and 7 8 inches, which is a little tricky to get the center line of each one while you're trying to glue and clamp, so I find it easier to measure edge of slat to edge of slat, which is 2 and 5 8. Now that the hardest part is done, it's a lot easier to handle. Just turn it around and you can do the bottom on the other side. Well, there's that nail gun blocking the camera again. And speaking of, I put 16 gauge inch and a half nails into these joints for some added security. I do ship these across the country and all over the place, but if you're just doing this for yourself at your house, the glue is plenty strong and you can probably skip this step. So as you can see, the glue is dry and I removed all the clamps. Now it's time to just do a little touch up staining. That way I can get in here before the top is on and it makes it a lot more difficult.
At this stage, we're ready to put the top on. So grab your glue, get a nice bead all the way across the top on the fronts and the legs, anywhere the top is gonna to come into contact. Also, don't forget to get some glue on the bottom of the top. Now let's get it into position. I use 3 8 of an inch on either side as an overhang, and then I flush up the back. And like before, the nails are optional for you. For me, it's just a bit of added security. Moving on now, let's grab some clamps and clamp it down. I grab a sacrificial piece of wood, that way I don't dent the finished piece if I happen to over tighten the clamp a little too much. It's soft wood, so it really doesn't take a whole lot. You're going to need at least four clamps. I use six just to get a little bit of extra clamping power in the middle in case there's a bow or a cup that I don't notice. So depending on the temperature or humidity, I generally try to wait at least 24 hours. That way the glue can fully set before taking the clamps off. Now the home stretch. Just apply a coat of polyurethane. I use the stuff out of a spray can because it's fast and easy, but you can use wipe on, you can use whatever you like here, shellac, or not seal it at all. But I do recommend sealing it if this is gonna get any prolonged use. So that's it. I appreciate you watching if you've made it this far. We went from raw pieces of pine to this finished wine rack. If you liked what you saw, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe. And if you like these videos, let me know. I'll keep making them. Otherwise, thanks again and take care.